It's go time. Welcome back to Burnout Box, season two, episode... 21? Somebody, 20? somebody, 20, somebody 20 bailing out here? 21. 21. 21. 21. Episode 21. Uh, wait, it's not episode 799 or 760 or... Or 500? <laughs> yeah. Some buzzwords these days on the internet. Buzz numbers. 52. 52. <laughs> 20? Eight. So how's everybody doing today? Um, sorry we're starting a little bit late. Our daughter is at summer camp at New Smyrna and they had a little show and it was a long one. So we got back here as soon as we could to start Burnout Box. What is going on everybody? What are all these parts on the table? There's a house. A <laughs> house. There's a TV, another TV. It sounded like he's a TV. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're naming house. Tuberculosis. <laughs> and there's a Reeve, Rev X performance programmer by SCT. Basically the same thing as an SCT X4, but with cloud functionality. And it's got our logo on it, pretty fancy. Yeah, see? on the side too, I, see, yeah. I saw it by up, up here too? Yeah. yeah. So what is that? So um, we are releasing a video on Monday with yours truly in it. And um, if you can guess what the car makes horsepower wise and post on the thread that's... Um, on Instagram and on Facebook. There's a specific Instagram and Facebook thread that you have to post on where we're giving away a free RevX to whoever guesses the exact number or the closest. Um, decimal points are allowed. So, are we doing this Price is Right style? Like, so what is the yeah. Price is Right style? So you can't go over. Oh. The first person to get closest to the number without going over will win. Price is Right style. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched that in so long. I've never watched it. I just have heard references to it and I, and I pick up on references. That was like a, I feel like it was a Saturday morning thing or something, Sunday morning thing. I don't know. Yeah, so guess and you can potentially win this actual Rev X that I am beating on right now. We have some comments coming in, just people saying hi and a couple questions. Before we hit on those, do you want to talk about what else you got up there? All right, so we released some videos earlier this week on throttle bodies um, on Track Attack. So, this is what was on Track Attack. The VMP Monoblade and the VMP Super Monoblade 163R. Um, these throttle bodies in our, in our, were in our newsletter. They're on the website. I wrote a bunch of information down about them. So check that out. Let us know if you have questions. And there's a good old Gen 3 R up here, bare housing only. So I don't know. Let's just talk about stuff. Uh, Jonathan Whitaker is on the line. He says, "I hear my car in the background." I said, "Are you sure that's your car, Jonathan?" <laughs> that's kind of funny. Uh, is, baby has a lot of noises to make right now. Is She's it his burped. car? Okay. Yeah. A little uh, D cell pop. <laughs> Let's see, we have some comments coming in. I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, Cameron Morara uh, says, uh, hello, Team BMP. Hey. Hey. Um, Biani007 says, hello, BMP. Hi. Gaming Vlog Channel says, hello. Hi. Brandon Cormier's on the line. Cormier, Cormier, I would like to say. Wally Coyote says, hey, folks. Hello. Um, Slab Shack is talking about is okay. Doctor Boost is 760 enough power to weight ratio to kill the cat. Oh, in reference to the GT500. Mm -hmm. Which cat? One of them? Both of them? I mean, I immediately think Hellcat, but oh. That's a good question. I how many speeds is the DCT? 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's eight for some reason. It could be as little as seven. Does anybody watching know? So is the GT500 going to kill the Hellcat? I think you should tune your GT500. DCT is seven. Seven speeds. Nastang says. Right away, you yeah. should tune, pulley, and throttle body your GT500, and you will make um, a lot more horse pressure. Exactly. Like, that's... We have fun with it and kill and Hellcats. We did it back in 2006. We're going to do it again. We're going to mod the heck out of them. They're going to make a thousand plus horsepower. I mean, really, a thousand is really not that much for what that setup's capable of. Justin Forrest says straight pipe the world. Straight pipes. Okay, Justin. Yes. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Nastang says hello. Hello. Uh, Topper says, all your streams belong to us. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, Biani says, 760 to the wheels. Let's see here. And Topper says, the mid uh, 3.5, 0 to 60, has me thinking there's some torque or horsepower cap preservation vectoring to save the DCT. There's probably, probably is a lot. Yeah, um, I can imagine. I have to look at that part of the cow because the last GT500 actively controlled how much torque the engine put out at wide open throttle and it was kind of neat. It was for a specific reason for this car. I wonder if they'll do the same thing for different reasons. Um, yeah. Um, so this is a, a good question. Um, it's a simple question for the most part. Uh, RJ Dan uh, says, hey guys, what would it take for a tour around the BMP ranch? So do you want to comment about if you wanted to get a tour here at the ranch, what you need to do? Um, come by and buy a t-shirt and we'll show you around. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Come, come by during business hours. Yeah. Ask for a tour. Yeah, Somebody got, will take you on one. We got some t-shirts in the front, front area. Pick one out and, you know, we'll just... I mean, there's always something to see. There's a dyno pole going on right now. The so. best thing is, is call in advance. Yeah. So that that way people know that you're coming. Sales yeah. guys or somebody can be available. We got lots of apparel, hats, t-shirts, keychains. Pick one of those up while you're here. I uh, Kerry acted a little weird at first because I wasn't sure if like he wanted us to do like a video tour or like an in-person tour. Justin would love to do a video tour, too. Yeah, we can do a video tour, too. I mean, we kind of do that sometimes in some of our videos. Uh -huh. In our open houses that we've had, we've had yeah. a couple videos on that, too. I was talking to David Patterson last night. Um, he's probably going to come back sometime. We don't know when, but sometime in the future. Cool. So we'll have another open house deal. Sweet. Uh, Best on most popular question of the day was, oh my god, why is the GT500 so weak? I could make that with a Coyote. Uh, yeah, there's EV, EVO's 8s running 760 horsepower too. What of it? I don't know. You know, you gotta come, you gotta figure what the factory's willing to claim and come out with and warranty and pass emissions with like they're dealing with so many targets that it's actually it's pretty tough yeah i mean it's actually pretty impressive for a factory car to come i mean it is but it isn't i mean the, um. as you, well what i was going to say is as you go up in horsepower like the ability to hit that horsepower the time and money that goes into it like scales tremendously Popper says, uh, you can thank Ford for saying demon kills demons and then laying the proverbial egg. They <laughs> clearly punted this one, hopefully just the beginning. D-Man wants to know what color will BMP's 2020 GT500 be? I don't know. I'm not telling anybody yet. I mean, it's going to be a surprise. Rebecca, what color should it be? Any color as long as it's black. <laughs> I knew we'd get an interesting answer out of her. So... There's so many good colors, though. Yeah, black. Black with no stripes. Black with no stripes. Just like Rebecca's current build. All black, everything. 
and you won't get pulled over that way. <laughs> if it's red, you'll get pulled over faster. Um, I've only owned black and I don't think did I ever get pulled over in the SRT8 Jeep? No. I've owned black and gray cars for the most part. I had an SRT8 Jeep that was red. I've been pulled over in everything. D-Man says orange is the best, and Dorian Felton says black, no stripes, absolutely. Yeah. Black, no stripes, okay. We got some we got some votes here for black, no stripes. Um, Brandon Cormier says 12 to 1 compression ratio on 18s, great for naturally aspirated, but sucks for supercharged video uh, vehicles. I don't know. Does it though? Mad Max says hello, BMP. And then I, they're, oh, sorry. Uh, Nasting says the Hellcat makes 717 horsepower. The Demon makes 800 on pump gas. You need to run race gas to get the full 840. They're having a whole conversation, so I might read them off somewhat as we go about the GT5. Um, Gopher Chucks Games says, hey guys, happy Thursday. Happy Thursday hello. to you as well. Mitchell Page says, hey, y'all. Hi, Mitchell. Mitchell, um, we need some more crazy race car ideas. Send them over. Pablo says, uh, Pablo Five O says, grab her green. And Mad Max agrees, black. Uh, let's see what else we have here that's, demon isn't being made anymore. I'll let that sink in. And then the red eye is basically the demon on another body. Hmm, 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 hmm. We got one of those sitting in the shop. I was going to say, speaking of, Ken Ingram says hi. Hey, Ken. Okay. Uh, Christoph says VMP is the best. Thanks. Rick Height says good afternoon, Justin, Rebecca, and Carrie. Hey. hey there. Jose would like to know does the Gen 3R fit a 2018 F 5 liter? Not yet. We are working on, so when we do the 18 up kit for Mustang and for F-150, it will be a special fitment for 18 up because there's really not a whole lot different on 18 up except for there's these DI fuel injectors and rails in the valley that take up a lot of space. So the best way to do it is to redesign the whole supercharger kit, move some stuff around, and it's going to end up making a ton of power. Um. Let's see here. Project 1X says, hey, Justin, I've been meaning to ask, what do you think would cause positive knock of 4.0 only in third gear? It's on a 15 GT, 69 millimeter pulley, E85 with all the goodies. I mean, a lot of times the knock sensor resets on the shift and it's got an opportunity to have some noise introduced into it and then have to make a decision as to whether it's going to ramp timing out or ramp it back in. Um, I'll tell you, third gear, you're the most heavily loaded, more heavily loaded than first and second. So, uh, you know, knock sensors either work really well or they don't. Um, I've got a truck that I'm tuning right now that does not have a good reliable knock sensor. No matter what, at 4,000 RPM, it starts yanking timing. Uh, Topper says, hey all, so I'm running a 2.4 upper and twin 67, JLT123, no cats, tuned by VMP, and I keep having a weird dead pedal and stalling issue, and only solution is going back to the base tune. Any ideas? Um, it's a 1314 GT500, I believe, right? Uh, he doesn't say. Maybe yeah, 2.4 pulley. And for some reason, 1314 GT500s do that from the factory. There's a couple things we can try to do and improve that, but it seems to be kind of like a, some type of factory software bug. Sebastian says hi. Hi. Hey. Brett Swagger says, I have an F-150 with a Gen 1 Coyote Roush Stage 1. Uh, what do I need to upgrade to push 600 horsepower comfortably. 600 crank horsepower or wheel horsepower? I'm going to guess wheel, but that's a guess. Do you, um, do you recall those are rated crank from the factory? Mm -hmm. I think they're probably like 
a Gen 1 Coyote Phase 1, probably like in the low 500s. So I'm going to say a 75 millimeter pulley, a VMP tune, VMP throttle body, we can get you making some more power. Um, that setup is kind of limited by the factory 11 to 14 F-150 cams at the end of the day. So I, it tends to run with the same pulley combo. It tends to see a lot more boost than a Mustang because the intake cams are so restrictive. And, oh, more boost is better. Well, not necessarily in this case because it's actually more... Um, the motor is more restrictive and it's not flowing the air to make the horsepower. Dale wants to know if there's a way we can spin the Gen 3R so they can see the inside of it. Well, this one has no insides and we're not going to show a whole lot of the inside. So that's that for now. There you go. Uh, Robert says, when can we see the Gen 3R on the 18 uh, Mustang? We're working on it. It's coming. Topper says, uh, going back to his car that was having issues that you said, it's uh, probably a GT500. He says, it only has issues when my wife drives it. Could it be it's Christine and it doesn't do it for me? We had a um, 50th Chrysler that my dad called Christine <laughs> from the Stephen King books. Oh, that's from a Stephen King book. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's why. I, yeah, it was um, a movie too. That's why that red and white GT500 was Christine also. Oh, nice. Dorian says a Gen 3R and a 350 would be awesome. Go out and do it. Yeah. We'll sell you the Gen 3R, get with us at Seals and Support, or order on the website, and then put it on your GT350. Let her rip, see what she does. Yeah. Fistful of Bacon, yes, that's a screen name, Fistful of Bacon, says, when are you going to build the baby a Mustang? <laughs> <laughs> when she gets a job. <laughs> oh, man. So <laughs> She's the youngest of ch six children. She's wearing diapers that are 10 years old because we claw diaper. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of Starkey kids that we could technically build a Mustang for. There's a whole lot. <laughs> the oldest one is still five years away from having a driver's license, though. Well, four years away from a learner's permit. Oh, my gosh. Rick would like to know, how soon will you be able to tune a 2020 GT500? The day that I get one. The day that I get my hands on one, and hopefully it'll be ours... But sometimes the way f cars get shipped out of Ford is a little bit of a pita. Yeah. So. so Matt would like to know how long before Rebecca gets back on the track and we can get engine build updates on her car. Do we have any updates on my engine right now? Um, there's a little bit of machine work left to do to the engine. And the engine builder's on vacation this week. Uh, I didn't know that. So. They dropped off another engine today, or yesterday, so that's why I'm yeah. asking, since I wasn't here for to hear that yeah. news, because otherwise I would be up on the news on my engine. So but. I'm going to get with the machine shop and see, um, see when they're coming back from vacation. Yeah. And then um, it shouldn't put, take as long to get it back together. I would anticipate about a month before I'm back in the car. Yeah, that gives us time to really, like, Get it do broken some, in. Yeah, and do some other little stuff. Make to some it. improvements. Like all that stuff. Silly stuff that needs to be done. Like deleting ABS is something we're gonna do at the same time as the engine going back in. So like it's it's not just dropping in an engine, but it is just dropping in an engine too at the same time. So um, I don't know. I was back in the car four weeks after I had Orion. Um, it's it's not me at this point, it's it's me building the car. <laughs> right. And having time to do that. <laughs> Uh, Jonathan is a little late on the color, but he says he hopes that our GT500 is green. Mm. And then uh, Nasting says, just as long as it's one of the obnoxious colors, that's what matters. Everybody likes the loud colors. Um, Mario says, maybe the new GT500 will be like the 0304 Termi, where they make advertised horsepower to the wheels. LOL. 
you know, in a lot of ways, I think it's going to be underrated. Um, That's why I don't wear them. Maybe we could show some dino graphs on the screen and I could kind of point at them and stuff like that. But uh, there's a couple things that the GT500 has working for it, and there's a couple things it has working against it. So um, the first thing is it's nine and a half to one compression. And that adds a whole bunch of durability. It also costs you a whole bunch of power. Yeah, and I like compression. Yeah. As I alluded to earlier. Yeah. Um, 11 to 1 on a Coyote with Octane is no problem. Um, 12 to 1 with direct injection to add some additional cooling is apparently no problem. Um, so that's what's working against the new GT500. What's working for it is having a TVS, 265 liter TVS. Uh -huh. um, it's going to have like a twin 92, or not a twin, a single 92 throttle body, which is actually really freaking big. Um, it's going to have an awesome intercooler setup. The heads are improved. It's 5.2 liter displacement. So, like, if you're building a boosted Coyote, like, that is, like... It's a really good foundation. The block, the cylinder heads. You know, that would actually be an interesting um, test, is to just swap in some pistons, higher compression pistons. Yeah. And see how much it picks up. Dorian agrees with you. It'll definitely be underrated. Um, Joseph would like to know, what's your most reliable setup for a 16 GT that is a daily driver on average street tires, in your opinion? Um, good question. So, um, Gen 3R, 88 millimeter pulley, FIC 1000 injectors, 93, 91 to 93 octane. Pretty simple. Make about 700 tire on average, sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher. Nassing says you should start the little one with the Fox body. <laughs> By the time she can drive, Fox bodies will be how old? Oh, God. Okay, so let's go with the oldest Fox body, a 93. Or the newest Fox or, body. Yeah, the, that's what I meant. Sorry, the, the most recent, I guess, is what I was trying to say. Um, yeah, I was going to say, that went really... Yeah. 30 plus years old. <sighs> wow. We better get one now and, and store it. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's like, an interesting idea. It Just, is. Um, Nastang says, we're so spoiled nowadays, and OEM produces a warranted 760 horsepower vehicle with 5.2 liters, and people are whining. Yeah, Name absolutely. Name another V8 in the world that has power without spending thousands, hundreds of thousands. Of yeah, I mean, absolutely. what Ford's done is pretty impressive. It really is. Like, that's what I was getting at earlier. Like, a, a factory, like... And, and anybody can go drive this car. Like, that blows my freaking mind. Anybody can go drive this car. There's just a knob on the center console, and you tell it where you want it to go. Justin Forrest stated, he said that he read an article that stated the 2020 is detuned by 7%. I can believe that. Uh, Chris... Cologne? Cologne? Cologne. Cologne. Uh, will the heat exchanger clear the direct injection on the Gen 3 Coyote with the heat spacer you guys sell? I want to mount the new Gen 3R VMP on mine. I am, um, if you wanted to, no, the short answer is no, but if you wanted to get creative with milling machines and other stuff like that, have at it. Popper said, you could be the forces of Mustangs. <laughs> um, Robert Phelps says, what's the difference between the 18 F-155 liter versus the 18 Mustang 5 liter? Is the truck motor as strong as the Mustang? So for once, the motors have gotten more and more similar. Um, they're converging rather than diverging. Yeah, they're the same compression ratio. Um, they, 
the truck motor is like basically better than ever and closer to a Mustang engine than ever. Uh, one of our one of our buddies is on here, Dorian. He's got the truck motor. Maybe he can offer some commentary as to how strong he feels it is compared to the Mustang motor. But I don't think it gives up much, if anything. Uh, Eric Holiday says, "What ECU are you going to use on the new car?" Oh, Eric. Oh, Eric. You don't understand. <laughs> I, I've gone full circle. And now... I feel like we've gone around the circle a couple times. I almost called Uva last night when I had time. Oh, gosh. Because, you know, I'm thinking about building DI motor for, the, for Rebecca's new race car. So um, the, the old car has a motor that's almost together. But the new car, we have a bare block for. And we were going to dry deck it and put it together and everything. But... You just got to pick a direction and do it. <laughs> and then other opportunities came up and... Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Beards and Cars would like to know, what is the best way to lower under engine temps? I think this is what's making my IATs high. And do you know if your dual fan heat exchanger will work with his Kenny Bell setup? It will absolutely work with um. your Kenny Bell setup. Um, 170 degree thermostat and dual fan triple pass heat exchanger. That's where it'd be at. Yep, that'll fix you up. Uh, he came back and said, also, be the first on YouTube to get the GT500 and build it up to run low nines and watch the subscribers roll in. <laughs> We're, that's, that's pretty much like, I mean, not that exact plan, but I'm gonna have so much fun with that car. Um, William says, I can't wait to see y'all in October. Maybe push it up to September for my hopefully uh, 3R. Ooh, cool. Uh, Colin says, I have a 17 GT MT82 with plastic bolt-on mods. Long tubes, full 3-inch cat-back, JLT intake, and tune. I'm looking at putting a Gen 2 or 3 VMP supercharger on it. I am now wondering if it's worth putting the money in the 17 or buying an 18, 19, 10 speed. Any input? I would mess with the 17. Yeah, I would too. Because the engine's really good. Like, I mean, yeah, they fail, but we were doing stupid stuff. And there was a video released about that. What, Tuesday? Wednesday? Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday, about Track Attack making like 900 rear wheel horsepower on the stock engine, which is 93 and boosting. And we'll talk about that a little bit later too. Uh, Justin Forrest came back and said, 760 horsepower at 12 PSI, detuned by 7% out of a 5.2 liter. I don't see an issue. Only 12 PSI. Jeez. Man. D-Man says, these days manual is a theft deterrent. <laughs> true. <laughs> He's not wrong. It's kind of funny, actually. Um, do you guys run oil coolers on any of your cars? If so, which one? Mm, yeah, no. None of them. Um, if you are road racing a lot, the oil cooler is a really effective way to pull a lot of heat out of the engine because the high temperatures, especially the Coyote, because it runs 7,000. I mean, the Boss runs 7,500 stock. The uh, road race teams are running like 8,000 RPM. So all that time at high RPM builds a lot of heat in the oil. So an air to oil cooler just cools them down like nothing. Does Jonathan Blevins run a oil cooler? <sighs> he, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to say he doesn't because an Optima, he, it's like best of three laps. Mm. So you go out there, you warm the tires up, and then you go balls to the wall for just a lap, and then you can back it off a little bit if you got your good run. And you know, temperatures become an issue when you run for 15, yeah. 20 minutes at a time, or you run a whole race, which can be an hour That's or two. That's exhausting when you're a drag racer. Also, when it starts raining and you're like, it's time to go back, right? And they're like, no, you keep driving in the rain. You're like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> Um, James would like to know, how essential is it to upgrade the oil pump gears and crank gear on a 16 Coyote? Uh, 
uh, if you're going to push like over 700, 750 and race it a lot, I'd say pretty important. If you're not, not so important. Yeah, if you're at that 700, 750, it's a good, it's cheap insurance because <laughs> if they go, it, things get exponentially more expensive. But do you need them below that? Likely not. Anthony says, people also need to realize that Ford needs to calibrate these things from factory to run on the nation's worst 91 octane. Mm -hmm. Anyone with good 93 will pick up solid power with nothing more than a tune. So I could talk about when the first GT500 was released back in 2006 as a 2007 model. Uh, like Ford had to get the car out there for a while and see how many people managed to blow up because as, as a large auto manufacturer, it is scary to release a car with that much power because like one of the things they pointed out was the fuel quality. The original GT500 would run on 87 octane. It was so detuned and it had no knock sensors either. Like they just had to calibrate it that way from the factory. Um, so I, I think that's a big part of why Ford's being conservative. You know, will the 21 or the 22 get a bumped horsepower rating? Maybe, or they might just let the aftermarket do its thing and that be that. D-Man says, I replaced my oil pump gears because I was in there installing the blower and dropped the stock gears from head height six feet and they cracked. <laughs> uh, Jordan says, how can a 93 tune run and hold 18 pounds of booze with only losing two degrees of timing? I don't know. It depends on the situation you're in. Is that a specific... Like, did this happen, or is it theoretical? <laughs> What's yeah. going on here? Yeah. I mean, like, a GT500 is low compression, so it takes a ton of timing. Uh, the Coyote with boosting in 93 will take a lot of timing. What's the air temperature? Uh, there's a bunch of factors. I mean, 18 is kind of a lot. It's at 18 PSI, right? So. He came back and he said, it can't, right? Like, it can't do it. I would not run that much boost. And, and how much timing? He didn't actually say the timing number, did he? No, he says, how can 93 run, uh, lose two degrees of timing? Lose two degrees. From, from where to where, though? I think are we going? He said, so where it came from, he said, another Coyote driver said it can, but I believe it can't. You can do anything once. Or half, my, time. or half a time. Or half a time. That's my favorite statement this week. Um, let's see. Uh, Slab Shack is on the line and says, why is it now common that high compression motors like Boost and in the past people were against it? Thought? We are just talking about that here in the shop because one of the um, technicians that has a... One of the technicians... One of the tuners, sorry, Matt, that has a race coyote is bumping his compression ratio and I think everybody's just pushing the limit you know it started in class racing where that was the only way to make more power and you just got to watch your tune up that much more carefully I know we have a, a an aftermarket uh, standalone tuner that's washing Eric that tunes a lot of cars so maybe he has a couple pennies two cents about high compression but just be careful with your tune and um, make a bunch of power. Uh, Horse GT says, header recommendations for a Gen 1 Coyote on E85. I don't want to keep replacing the O2 sensors. Ooh. I, well, we angled the O2s on your Dynatech. Mm -hmm. And some people say that that still doesn't help them. So Kooks makes... The Kooks long tube is actually a shorter tube design. Um, so the O2, I think, is the collector. Instead of the collector being horizontal, it's kind of an angle. Yeah. So I think the O2 would potentially be at a better spot. Um, but yeah, I don't have any specific recommendations at all. Topper says, haven't seen this question asked before, but can you run the hood mat off on the 1314 GT500 to try to get some extra flow around the motor. I noticed my filter tub makes my hood sit funny. Huh. 
Yeah, yeah, you could take your yeah, mat off. Take it off. And then he also came back and said, would the heat cause an issue for the stripes or hood paint? I don't think so. There's, the hood mat almost seems to be there for other reasons. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think it'll hurt the paint, at least not as much as we drive our cars, which is not that much. Um, the Mustang brother says, I have a 5.4 Lightning uh, swap new edge running stock GT500 um, blower. What BMP blower could I go to without, any is without too many issues? Um, running TF heads and stage three crower cams supporting mods on it. So this is kind of funny because this car doesn't have, probably doesn't have a hood on yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, there's a, you either have a big cow or... <laughs> Or no hood. Like a, like a 12 inch cowl. Oh yeah, like a huge cowl. Because like all the clearance issues are at the front by the who, pulley. Who was it that uh, had that and ran around without a hood? Somebody locally, I forget his name, I he's been over it. here. Yeah. Bought him. Yeah, I wonder if this is the same car. Yeah. So you would run our G, you would order a GT, a, a GT500 VMP blower. So either a GT500 Gen 3, Gen 3R, Hey, if you're interested in a Gen 3, I've got a bunch of them, and I'll make you a deal. So we're being asked again. Uh, okay, so Cute Shadow Kia, uh, one of our lady followers who's been tuning in each for the last couple weeks now, uh, says, have you already bought a car for the little offspring? <laughs> Uh, Nastang says, uh, L&M just released cams for the GT350. I don't trust tuners around me with Ford products. If I were to do a top-end rebuild with reported heads, new cam profiles, and intake, can this be remote tuned? Um, yeah, I would do it. Um, I, uh, I would have fun doing that because I did a lot of tuning on my GT350 when I had it. And I've kind of just, I wondered if you tore into one and upgraded it, how much power we could make. So if you reach out to anybody at VMP, just kind of mention it's a Justin specific thing and, and I'll either tune it or I'll get one of our best tuners on it. Um, it's, it's not a run of the mill type request. So that's why I say that, uh, you know, it may require some specific channels, but that would be cool because ported GT350 heads with the valve train geometry and the valve size and everything else actually flow a ton. Uh, D-Man who mentioned that he had replaced his oil pump gears because it's in there installing the blower and drop the stock gears. He said he just got the Gen 3, but he already wants the R. Oh, sorry about that. But Gen 3 Rs are priced pretty reasonably. Mm -hmm. and, and you should be able to get good um, yeah. money for yours on the market, Gen so. Three. yeah. Hassan would like to know, why are there no top feed blowers for late model engines besides mass air? Besides mass air. Huh, huh. I was talking to uh, David Patterson, mm -hmm. and he swapped a Coyote. I, mean, I promise I'm getting to the point. He, was, he swapped a Coyote into another chassis, and he's like, the cold air was such a pain in the butt, you know, but we had to run one because we had a mass air sensor on the car. And he's like, I called a bunch of people and I said, can I run this thing speed density? And they're like, no. And I'm like, yeah, there's really, you know, no, you can't. Now the new GT500 is speed density. So everybody at the racetrack is going to pull their freaking cold air off and run the thing and pick up like a half pound of boost or something like that. But, um, but, but anyways, uh, most Ford stuff is speed density or mass air. There's mm -hmm. only a couple exceptions to speed density. 2020 GT500, I'm pretty sure it's going to be speed density. Um, 18, 19 Roushes are, and 15 to 17 F150s are speed density, which is kind of neat because it's a Gen 2 Coyote control pack that can run a 6R80 and is speed density. Mario says, uh, 69 millimeter 15 combo, Gen 3R gains, how much the Gen 3? The test y'all have run, has it been with that 1% Gen 3R or a regular Gen 3R? 
So the coyote test results that we've shown have been with a regular Gen 3R. Um, the regular Gen 3R, the stage two, is the best all around Gen 3R for stock engines and built engines up to around 1100 rear wheel horsepower. The one percenter is a specially tuned Gen 3R for high RPM use that we will be talking more about in the future. Uh, Nastang, who was talking about the build that you said that you would be willing to tune, that it might be a special case, says, um, thanks, it might take him a while to figure out logistics, such as who would build and when, um, but he'll reach out to you if it becomes a reality. Ship it down here, we'll swap the cams, swap the heads, it's all good. We've got a head porting guy that can, do GT can turn GT350 heads around really quick. Um, Full Auto GT says, Justin hooked me up with one of those ported 18 manifolds. Full Auto GT, we got them on the shelf. I got a couple that's uh, in the trailer that came back from the show, too. Um, Mike Wasson says, love the little one, so cool. You guys look like great parents. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Bri2KTV says, uh, wants to know if we've ever thought of offering our superchargers in colors other than black. Apparently, he used ceramic paint to paint his Roush one glossy white. Oh, that's cool. I've seen white ones, and they look awesome. Um, Aaron Bickle has pretty much demanded that we get him a white supercharger. So um, we're going to have to have someone paint one white. Um, we've thought about it. We just uh, haven't... Um, I mean, it's, it's just best, really, for you to do that once you get your supercharger. You know, for us to do it. What uh, if it's Oxford white versus yeah. another color white? Like, yeah, they come in black. That is so nice inside. <laughs> you know, everybody's going to sit there and say, turn it around, turn it around. You're turn talking it about around. how nice it is. Turn it around, yeah. Horse GT says, does roll racing with advanced track on off affect anything? So, you know, we have a four-wheel drive vehicle that we race. No rolls, you dig. Uh, um, where I'm going with this is, have, you, going. have you ever accidentally left traction control on in the truck? I don't think I have. A long time ago I did in the Mustang, but that was from a dig. Well, I'm not as experienced as a racer as Rebecca, and I think the truck ran its best time with traction control on. I think when it ran that 11-1, yeah. traction control was on. Yeah, I don't think I've ever left it on, but maybe. Glenn Hill says he's got a 13 GT with a VMP Gen 2, 69 upper, 15% lower, E85, twin 65, uh, Roush cold air. It runs 9.4. Uh, what's needed for 9.0 without a new blower? I am, are we tuning the car? Be my first question. And any type of bigger throttle body you can get on yeah. that thing is gonna help. Um, these are our 15 up monoblades. Our 11, our, our 05 to 14 monoblades we're still working on. Um, but, you know, either like a VMB Twin 69 if you still wanna have really, really good drivability or stepping into a monoblade is gonna yield big results on that thing. Um, a 69 and a 15 is a pretty serious combo. I mean, Rebecca, that's probably what you essentially ran mm. 890s with on your car. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with a yeah with a 2.3 liter. So did he, did did he say Gen 3? Gen 2. Like two. Gen 2. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a very specially ported Gen 2 R that's going to become available in a few. Um, in the next month or so. So if you are interested in upgrading, I can work with you on that. Uh, Q Shadow Kia says, looks aside, do you recommend the 18 plus five liters over the 15 to 17? Is it a bit better, uh, a lot direct injection, or even worse, tick, plasma coating, etc." 
I'm scared of the plasma coating. Yeah. I mean, we saw an engine here that had issues that, honestly, if it had been a Gen 2 Coyote, it would have lived long life or longish life. Um, James Thomas Clark says, hey guys, I'm looking forward to getting my Gen 3R blower when you guys seal the deal with the firm. But my question is this, have you ever heard of your brakes putting a lag on your wheel horsepower? To explain better, if I drive my car in the rain, uh, all four wets, I often lubricate my rotors with WD-40. If I don't, my wheels are very hard to turn. So, heard? whose brakes do you have on your car? Yeah. <laughs> we, we know a company that makes some brakes that have pistons that drag. Yeah, and it's harder to push when the car was lighter. Yeah. With the drag brakes than it was with stock brakes and heavier. I mean, that's not really a normal thing. The yeah. pistons should... You shouldn't have to do that. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Scarlin says, hopefully not too late here, but when will the 18 plus 5 liter F-150 blower kit comes out? Will the R model be available right out of the gate? It's going to be awesome right out of the gate. It's going to make a ton of horsepower. Um, we are putting together kind of all the information and all the details that we can release you and release to you and uh, and everything over the next couple of weeks. So more information is forthcoming. Um, the last set of questions actually that I have here is related to the 137 throttle body. Um, how is the 137 throttle body versus the twin 67 drivability wise? Um, what are the horsepower gains um, with the 137 as well? Okay, so really good questions. And I wanted to touch on the throttle bodies and the Track Attack 900 rear wheel horsepower video before the end of the show. And the show's basically over, so we'll, we'll talk about this and we'll finish up with that. Um, the 137 is the size, same size as the old Ford Racing Mono Blade, but these electronics are way better at controlling it than the old GT500 electronics. The gear ratio inside here is better and like the motor's bigger and I think it just has more torque on the blade. So when the computer's trying to modulate very, very low throttle angles, um, this throttle body does very well. So I would say drivability is good. You're gonna be looking at gains of like 20 to 40 wheel over a 67 throttle body and beyond that if you have a motor with aftermarket camshafts or you're pushing like for a thousand plus this throttle body makes some very very small compromises in drivability it likes to idle a little bit higher like 900 we've actually gotten it to idle at 650 rpm in testing but not every combination is going to be able to do that um, and this is, your, this is your throttle body for big, big numbers. So that's kind of the deal on throttle bodies. We're actually having some flow testing done so, you can, so we can show the flow potential because we think that's kind of better than horsepower numbers because horsepower numbers can vary a lot by combinations. Mm -hmm. If we just show you flow potential, you can make your decision based on that. Um, Track Attack made 900 rear wheel horsepower with a super aggressive <laughs> Boostane tune, an 85 millimeter upper and a 5% lower, and the VMP 137 throttle body. Um, that was a really big stretch on the stock fuel system, but with the efficiency of the Gen 3R, if you want to live on the edge, both on the stock motor and the stock fuel system, and run, you know, a nice big throttle body, a our Gen 3R supercharger, and a relatively large pulley. You know, you can live on the edge and you can make probably 800, 850 pretty solidly. Um, track attack was absolute best case scenario. And that car always has always dynoed well. I don't know if the trans has got perfect clearances or the engine's a little bit looser or whatever, but um, that's the deal. And we will be leaning on track attack big time after it gets a fuel system, which is happening in the next week. With that said, we're pretty much out of questions. So and Rebecca's going to do a video series about putting her car together and firing it up. Yeah. And all that other stuff. So that's yep. going to be exciting to get that thing back on the track. Her old car and her new car is still coming together. But um, that's kind of what's going on here at VMP. 
18, 19 kits we're working on like crazy. And I think that's it for today. If you're not signed up for our e-newsletter, sign up for our e-newsletter. Um, we're going to have some special promotions and things coming out through it. Um, so if you want to take advantage, make sure you sign up for it. Throw, throw them a link to our newsletter, I guess, to sign up. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. You want to do the outro? Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks. See you next time. Bye, everyone.